One, two, three, four. we're rolling everything's working yeah so we got that going for yeah, us more or less. <laughs> you get older it gets a little slower <laughs> booting up <laughs> yeah, takes a few right. minutes longer <laughs> yes it does well welcome to a wednesday edition hmm. of mike and john got it going on with mike marino and john king brought to you by firehouse doors and we did determine how how what we're going to give away a $100 gift card, courtesy of Firehouse Doors. Um, I wasn't at that meeting. How are we doing that? We are going to draw. We actually we have two $100 gift cards we have to give two? away for the month of November. I wish you'd let me in on this stuff. Uh, <laughs> pay attention, I got to pay attention pre-show. I guess <laughs> I did say this to you. You gave me a lot of information you don't pre-show. Listen. You don't listen. Okay, so we have two $100 yeah, gift 200 cards. Two hundred dollars gift cards from Firehouse yeah. Doors, our OG sponsor. Absolutely. Two one hundred dollars. Visa cards. Right. All right. And it's and super we're simple. Draw for we're them. not making this complicated. We're, we're not going to make this. No, it's going to be super simple. If you go to Mike and John Podcast.com, that's our website. Is it? I think so. Are you sure? I'm going to check it out. Yeah. Mike and that's A N D. No H and John. No H and yeah, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We dropped the H. You, it's <laughs> easier to put on. That's right. Our this logo. is how we're making it more efficient. Exactly. You go to Mike and John Podcast.com. Yes. You click on fun and games. Fun and games. I everybody. like fun and games. I do too. Do you like fun and games? I like Yahtzee. <laughs> well, there is no Yahtzee. But when you click on fun and games, Yahtzee. you will see the heading Yahtzee. contests and giveaways. Yes. And then what? Then you'll open it up and you'll have a chance to enter your name. Just one entry per customer, That's please. That's true. We have low ink on our printer. <laughs> right. And John starts swearing and at the printer. We, we shake it. We, it. He goes crazy. So we do check. Entry. We do yes. check. But yes. So uh, if you go there and enter your name in next Friday, not this Friday. Are we going to put it in the official Mike and John entry box? No, I was going to put it in the, in oh, the, in in the, the hopper, big drive, the oh, hopper, the hopper, hopper, unless, you know, I mean, right. I, you know. I'll set that one aside yeah. for another special occasion. Right. So it's going to go in the Just the main hopper. hopper. Just the main hopper. So people that are already in there will yeah, be entered. That's right. How about that? Right. And, uh, and, and again, one entry per household. This is the main Must hopper. Must be 18 to win. But then next Friday, coming up next Friday, which will be November... Let's see, today's the second. Today's second. Uh, November 11th. Very good. Right? Yeah. Friday's the fourth. Second. Yep. And then seven, seven days seven is the 11. The 11. It'll be 11 which will 11. Be, which will be Veterans Day. 11, 11, 22. Right. So if and you add the month and the day, you get the year. Wow. It's 11, amazing. 11, it's numerology. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's in the stars. It really and is. And it's Veterans Day. Mike Witt, owner of Firehouse Doors, a U.S. veteran. Look at how you tied that yeah. in without See? even trying. So, you didn't even know it. <laughs> what do you, I planned this out <laughs> in rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> the hamsters were running around like crazy. So in yes, there. next Friday, November eleventh, I gotta write draw that a winner for a one hundred dollars Visa gift card. All you have to do is go to mikeandjohnpodcast.com, click on fun and games, go to contests and giveaways, and enter your name and uh, email address, and you could win. And then we'll do it again two weeks after that. Which what date will that be? That'll be let's the see, the day after Thanksgiving. 25. Yeah. Which maybe we won't be on the air then. I was going to talk to you about that. What we were going to do that week. So maybe hey, the Wednesday. After the show. Maybe, maybe the Wednesday. Wednesday maybe the twenty third. Yeah, maybe or, the next you know, Monday. I think it would be to be determined. You know what? We'll That's a TBD. Here, here's what we'll do. Yeah. We'll do it the following Monday okay. after Thanksgiving, when Cougar's here. We'll that, let Cougar do the drawing. Right. All right. So the Visa gift card. See, look how we figured this all out oh, right in front That's of you. Visa we're gift. that transparent. <laughs> You know, other places they do things behind the scenes you have no idea, and you and you, and you they you go, fiddle faddle you stuff go, around. And what go, the oh. hell are they doing over yeah. there? You, here, you this is what you see is what you get. We're and, sorry. Yeah. All right. Impressive that it is. Yes. So yes, Firehouse Doors, the OG sponsor of Mike and John, got it going on, and we'll be giving away a couple hundred dollar gift cards courtesy of Firehouse Doors. I have a traffic report before we start. All right. 
uh, M59 near Argentine. There uh -huh. have been no accidents within the past 24 hours, despite everybody looking up to see that there fantastic is, billboard. There's a lot of rubbernecking going yeah, on. Yeah, there is. And, uh, yeah. Rubbernecking. <laughs> so be careful. Yeah. When you're driving along M59 and Argentine Road, you may see traffic There's, backups. We have a little camera monitored on that, so give a <laughs> thumbs up as you drive by. Sure. Okay. It's, it, I mean, it's yes, a billboard of cam. We do. Yes, of course we do. <laughs> a smile and wave. Yeah. Say hi, Mike and John. So, yeah. Hi. Hi. It's time for news. Local news brought to you by Cooper and Binkley Jewelers in downtown Brighton. The big trunk show coming up this weekend. That's right. We'll have details on that coming up. But first up, news, and here's what's going on. At a rally Tuesday night in East Lansing, Republican Representative Liz Cheney of Wyoming urged a standing room only crowd to think beyond partisan politics as she campaigned for Democratic Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin, who Cheney endorsed last week. Cheney, who received a standing ovation from the 600 people who were packed into the gym at East Lansing High School, said, quote, if we want to ensure the survival of our republic, we have to walk away from politics as usual. We have to stand up, every one of us, and say we're going to do what's right for this country. And Quote. I'm going to do what's right for this country. Sit down. Slotkin's being challenged by Republican State Senator Tom Barrett for the newly drawn 7th Congressional District. That's centered around Lansing and includes all of Livingston County. Slotkin, who admitted that she and Cheney differed on most policy issues, said they were in firm agreement on what mattered most, and that is preserving American democracy. At an event Tuesday morning in Howell, Barrett criticized Cheney for having the audacity to endorse his opponent in a critical race that will, quote, decide which party controls Congress, end quote, adding that Alyssa Slotkin and Liz Cheney proved that the political establishment has an unquenchable thirst for military engagement abroad, end quote. Cheney and Slotkin both serve on the House Armed Services Committee. They've been vocal critics of House Republicans who have sought to downplay the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol by pro-Trump supporters who were seeking to halt the certification of President Joe Biden's victory. On Tuesday, Cheney said that as a nation today, we are facing an ongoing assault by the former president and by people that are spreading his lie. According to an MLive Ann Arbor News analysis of new campaign finance disclosures, as of late October, a Democratic candidate seeking to represent a portion of Livingston County has out-fundraised her Republican opponent more than five times over. Democrat Jennifer Conlin, a one-time journalist, is running for the newly drawn 48th State House District, which is in Livingston County, including Hamburg and Genoa Townships and a portion of Putnam Township. It also includes a northern tier of Washtenaw County that dips down into Ann Arbor and a northeast section of Jackson County. According to campaign disclosures, Conlin has raised nearly $310,000 in cash and about $196,000 in in-kind donations this election cycle. Her Republican opponent, Jason Wolford of Howell, has raised just over $88,000 in cash roughly $2,200 in in-kind contributions. The biggest donor to Wolford's campaign is Wolford himself. The military veteran and minister has given almost $20,000 to his own drive for office. More notable, though, is the disparity in funding from the uh, candidates' respective parties. The fundraising arm of House uh, GOP contributed just $2,000 in in-kind donations to Wolford's campaign, while the Michigan House Democratic Fund has given almost 10 times that amount, $193,000, into media buys, polling, and campaign outreach for Conlon. And officials in Brighton say due to delays at the state level, the Grand River Avenue reconstruction project has been postponed until next year. An update on the city's website said due to issues out of the city's control, the bidding process took longer than anticipated. And when the project was let out in May, the bids received were much higher than expected. A new round of bids was solicited in July for a downsized project. And while successful, procedures at the state and federal levels delayed the awarding of a contract to the point where there were concerns whether there was enough time to complete the project before the end of the construction season. So the anticipated schedule now shows work beginning in April of next year and being completed in July of 2023. That project will resurface Grand River in both directions from Ore Creek to East St. Paul Street and between West North Street and Appian Way. You'll find more details and links on our website, mikeandjohnpodcast.com. And that's what's going on. You know, at that website, MikeAndJohnPodcast.com, we have a fun and game section. Do we? I th that's what I heard. If you click it, what what do you see there? Well, you see a chance to enter huh. to win that drawing yeah. at 11 11 huh. for a $100 huh. gift card, Visa gift card, huh. from Firehouse Floors. Huh. <laughs> that's what you see. Yes. You know what you see at uh, Cooper and Binkley Jewelers this weekend on Saturday? It's the big Simon G. Trunk Show. No, it's not a magic hack. No, no. But there's a lot of shining going on. Absolutely. Diamonds and designs from Simon G. For seven hours only in Cooper and Binkley Jewelers, you'll get great pricing, discount pricing. Also, bonus points for your purchases at Cooper and Binkley Jewelers. So be sure to stop by this Saturday. Uh, starting at 10, seven hours only. Cooper and Binkley Jewelers, the Simon G. Trunk Show. 
downtown on Main Street and online at cooperandbinkleyjewelers.com. Just in time for the holidays. Great stuff from Simon G. During the Trunk Show, November 4th. That's just a week Boy, before. That's, November, that's oh. November 5th. That's a Saturday. That's a Saturday. Right? Yes. Okay, right. Okay. Wait, let me double check that. Oh, Saturday. Okay, good. 10 to 5. We're having some calendar <laughs> problems here. <laughs> well, I got so confused because right. they're well, yeah. 11, 11, 22. Yeah. Now we're 11, exactly. 4, and now 11, 5. So 10, 4. This Saturday. Good buddy. No, that was last uh, week. All right. All right. Cooper and Binkley Jewelers this Saturday from 10 to 5, the Simon G. Trunk Show. Had a lot of great guesses in last night's uh, Tuesday Night Trivia. Did you check it out? I did. All right. The question. According to a recent study, the average American spends $68 a year on this. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to count for this year with the economy and everything because the price of everything has gone up. But on average, in an average year, right. the average American will spend $68 on this. My first thought with, with what people were saying, it had to be something that they get like on their way to work or on their way home from work something to eat or drink. There's a lot of those coffee guesses, right. foo-foo coffees. Yeah. But I imagine in a year, those foo-foo coffees, you've had those before, right? I have. I, I don't they're, they're not normally cheap, right? go for them. No, no. They're, they they're not be, cheap. They, so no, yeah. $68 isn't going to get you a lot for that foo-foo coffee. That, that's about a week. That's about, about a week's worth. If yeah. you're buying one every morning, that's and yeah. plus tip, that's roughly about what you're spending per week. Yeah. So it's not it's not foo-foo coffee. It's, it's not any kind of drive through food. Even if you have discount coupons and stuff, right? Uh, Jeff said birthday cards, which was a pretty good guess because those you can get the cheap ones, or you can, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know. And that's yeah. my well, wife yells at me if I spend too much on a card because well, now you're spending four or five well, bucks for a piece of card. I mean, sometimes you, and if you get the the singing ones, singing ones, you might as well nine, spend ten bucks. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just send a text. Yeah. Say happy birthday. You know, I remember like. Gosh, probably 10 years ago, I gave a card like that, uh, I think to my wife, and it got put away. Recently, you know, moving things around, I came across the card, I pulled it out, and I opened it up, and I was like, and it had a chihuahua doing the, the dance. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, well, <laughs> got the last bit out of that battery. <laughs> Gosh, the more for the battery. That's why the card's so expensive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, potato chips, said Kimberly. Food delivery, said mm, Christine. Right. That that may be, I mean, if you're just talking for the delivery alone, not the food with it, you know, the delivery charge. Right. Potentially, I don't know. I've never done the Uber Eats kind of thing or. My kids do it more. You know, I've done it a couple it's times. These kids and their these Uber Eats. Kids. You know, when we were kids, we'd have yeah. to drive to the place to get <laughs> right. the stuff. I mean, at this point, Uber Eats or, or you know, DoorDash, whatever, they come to the door and leave. Right. I wonder how long it is until there's a service where they just come up to your kid's room. <laughs> Taco Bell. <laughs> Enjoy in your room going, who the hell's in our house? You know, do they have it? And maybe they do. I don't know because I don't do this stuff. But maybe you could just order food for the week. You know, if you if you know you're going to be doing that, you talk to your Uber have a Eats standing guy. order. Yeah, yeah, this is okay. like, hey, I want this this right. this on this day, that right. on that day, and so and you got them lined up on the calendar. Right, and if you eat Taco Bell Monday through Friday, then you can have Uber Eats come up on Saturday and take you to the ER. <laughs> <laughs> See, is there <laughs> Uber wipes? <laughs> <laughs> gonna need a wiper here. This Taco Bell, that one you're gonna have to tip a little bit more. Right. Uh, Linda says satellite radio. You know, if you're gonna, well, I pay for yeah, that. if you're, I agree. I mean, look, you can get free here, my God. But if you're gonna listen to the radio, I suggest satellite radio. Okay, you know, you listen to what you want. You don't Didn't have to layer hear cartoon type characters and stuff that you're like, what am I listening to? You can yeah. avoid all that. So if you like satellite radio, go to satellite. Buy satellite radio. <laughs> buy lottery tickets. Yeah. You know, it's up to, what is it? Something billion? Is it over a billion? Yeah. Billion no one won the other night? Okay. No, nobody yeah. won the other night. Yeah. But your chances of winning are like oh, one in 292 point something million. Right. And if you win that, it could happen. we'd like to suggest that yeah. you buy uh, advertising on Mike and John Got It Going On. Go to our website, <laughs> mikeandjohnpodcast.com for details. Yeah. Uh, if you see. go to mikeandjohnpodcast.com and you click on support, you'll see advertise with Mike and John. How about that? It's just that easy. Kimberly says she spends $68 a year on shampoo. Now, that 
that's another thing that can be really expensive. Or it can be really cheap. Because well, Suave does what theirs does for less. That's what I heard. Suave is not an advertiser <laughs> on this show. No. And I don't get paid for endorsing Suave. Right. I haven't used Suave since the 70s. Okay. <laughs> Do they still make swabs? They do. Yeah. Okay. Just I just check. used it this morning. Oh. To be perfectly honest. Look at you stealing yeah. swabs to get thunder. this luxury, <laughs> luxurious Look at head all of the hair. body. Yeah. Swab. Oh, God, you can <laughs> see the hold it puts on here. I mean, this hair isn't going anywhere, fella. <laughs> Not yet. No. Well, <laughs> no deserters yet. Elizabeth says parking, sixty-eight dollars for parking. Oh. That's just one event. Oh my God. Like going to Alliance. You go to or LCA or yeah. Oh, yeah. you're done. Forget about it. Uh, furnace filters. That's a great guess. Right. How much is a furnace filter these days? They run you up there. And every time I go, I'm always like, to try oh, wait, what's, what's the, the size What's again? the size? And they yeah. text your wife, yeah, what is it again? Go, go down in the furnace. Actually, I've Get done that, I've done that enough times. I actually have the size saved on my phone. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I <laughs> That's a good somewhere. idea. Our good friend Brandon says that the average American spends $68 on condoms. Mm. Brandon's getting a little action. <laughs> Brandon seems to like condoms. Yeah, I think that is about half of his answers of all trivia questions, whether they're related or not. Susan says wrapping paper. Paulette says water. Right. Cleaning supplies says Whitney. Um, Ian Roberts says ranch. I'm going to guess dressing. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Because the average ranch if probably costs more than 68 bucks. 68 yeah. Uh, All right. Soap says Sally. Do we have a correct answer? Uh, I think we question. did. I think we did. Uh, let me double check. I know we had it. Yeah. I just have Ann says deodorant, by the way. Okay. That's a good guess. Uh, I, I do yes. see a correct answer. It was underwear. Yes. The average American spends $68 a year on underwear. Who's our winner? Well, was it Whitney? All right. Hold on. I'm double checking. I thought you had it. Huh? <laughs> well, I saw it last night. It was uh, Melinda. Okay, that's what I thought. Melinda. All right, I didn't want to say. Melinda, because, uh, yeah, the other one was socks. But we spend more on underwear than socks, apparently. Yeah. Well. Well, who knows? That's a, you know, if you're shopping at those more uh, boutique places, I think you're spending more than $68 on underwear. That might be like one pair. Were they, buy the multi-pack. Were they coming like a container? Yeah. Like a tube. <laughs> You're paying more for the packaging right. than the underwear is really worth. Yeah. <laughs> Mine comes in like a Ziploc bag. <laughs> That's my six pack. Yeah. Ooh, bonus. Two uh, extra. Okay. Two bonus pairs. That'll work. Your Fruit of the yeah. Looms are a little cheaper than that. Yeah, how, much does, how much does the average pack of men's Fruit of the Looms cost? I, let's let's I, look I, at that. you got to find that out. Yeah, I'll find that All out. Right. Uh, kill some time and tell everybody about Firehouse Doors, John. That's not killing time, Mike. No, it's not. No, because Firehouse gap. Doors, of course, has been serving Livingston County for 24 years. They it's got to be drink. getting close to 25. Right, that's now. right. we got to get the date from them yeah. when that turns over. Uh, and they are family-owned. They strive to treat each customer like family, veteran-owned, as we mentioned. Because on Veterans Day, Firehouse Doors giving away a $100 gift card here on Mike and John. I got it going on. I got it. I got the reminder right in my Christmas in the bill. <laughs> there you go. Mike Witt, a proud U.S. Air Force veteran. Firehouse Doors, your one-stop shop for residential, commercial, and rolling steel overhead door needs. And for the past 21 years, Firehouse Doors has been Livingston County's only authorized distributor for CHI overhead doors. Call Firehouse Doors today, 810-599-7480. Great job, John. Uh, gee, my, thanks, Mike. <laughs> My computer's working a little slow. What kind of job My are you connection doing? has been interrupted. Yeah. Who was the Budinsky that interrupted my connection? All right, we're gonna find out how much the average pair. You wanna go Fruit of the Loom or Hanes? I'd say Fruit of the Loom. Fruit of the Loom. I mean, that seems to be the uh, of the <laughs> Loom underwear. Yes. All right, so for the average pair of women's. Fruit of the Loom, breathable underwear. And you gotta have breathable underwear. You don't want suffocating underwear. It's $12.19. Now for men's cool zone boxer briefs. Oh, the cool zone. Cool zone. You have to have a cool zone. I like to be in the cool you zone. You know where the cool zone is. <laughs> oh, it's right here. John's sitting in the cool zone. It's a cool zone. Which right is right now. in the crotch of the men's underwear. Like the this pod pad's in the crotch of this house. <laughs> so so for the cool zone briefs, right. about twenty-one bucks. For the regular breathable cotton briefs, sixteen ninety-nine. So seventeen bucks. So you'd have to buy a few packages. That's for like a four-pack. 
Now, if you buy the off-brand one, <laughs> for women's off-brand, it's like $8. Am I on the shopping network? What the hell are you doing over there? <laughs> I'm checking out underwear, John, because that was the answer to our trivia. It didn't take much for you to go, oh, they go check out some underwear online. I, got, I have to know what this is all about. Yeah. So, well, now we know. Exactly. But do I'm, we? I'm just... <laughs> I, I feel like the uh, Kmart flyer came out on the weekend with the paper. Ooh. Ooh. Look at the underwear <laughs> section. All right. So congratulations to was Melinda. It? Melinda. Melinda correctly guessed it. Yes. Congratulations. Right. Winner of our uh, trivia brought to you by Sold by Tanya Z. Yes. Real estate agent, Tanya Z. I mean, that's what she's selling houses. Yeah, not underwear. I mean, no, no. She's that. Yeah, don't. Uh, if you go into one of the houses, I mean, there's underwear laying I mean, yeah, no, that, that you might want to. Tanya yeah. does a quick gonna drive the bar. That's going to drive the market down. <laughs> if you're leaving underwear in your house, don't do that. I uh, think that's one of the tips. Be. I think that's one of the tips that Tanya would give you if you're selling a house. Don't leave old underwear out. That's one of those little tips. It's not going to help the sale of your home. It doesn't help the curb appeal. No, it really doesn't. It really does not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. congratulations to Melinda. We have our two cent history lesson coming up. Hi, this is Jerry Millen, longtime Livingston County resident and owner of the Greenhouse of Walled Lake. Brighton City residents, you're being lied to. Check out BrightonTruth.com. We'd like to bring a greenhouse medical facility to Brighton and give patients safe access. We're asking Brighton residents to vote yes on a medical marijuana facility being allowed in Brighton. Please check out BrightonTruth.com. The Reefer Madness Group, they're lying to you. See the truth. BrightonTruth.com. Discover the truth at BrightonTruth.com. You ever check out Bing and what's trending? Bing? Bing. Okay. Yeah, I, I just noticed in my... I still go to Ask Jeeves, but go on. Okay. <laughs> no, I just... Because a lot of times they, they have these reports like on, on some of the news shows or like news magazines kind of thing, like what's trending, the top 10, and right, all those, right. the list and all that kind of stuff. So do you pay attention to what's trending or do you just say, no. you know what's trending? Billboards on M59 are trending. It is trending. Especially near Argentine Road. Right. I heard that there was a, a new one there. It just, just popped. as of yesterday. As of yesterday. Right. There's not even Two hardly any dust on it yet. Devilishly handsome men staring down at traffic. And then there's ours. Well, there's <laughs> that one. So they're, they're looking at you, making sure you're not yeah, speeding. Yeah, we are. <laughs> and as you drive by, imagine us saying, How you doing? <laughs> you can answer that if you want. <laughs> I'm doing fine, Mike and yeah, John. Sure. Thanks for asking. It's November 2nd, our Two Cent History Lesson, brought to you by Drew Goebel and our friends at Oakland Insurance. That's right, Drew Goebel and Oakland Insurance and Michigan-based Frank and Muth Insurance. Give them a call, 248-647-2500. It was on this day, back in 1966, hmm. the Cookie Monster appeared for the very first time. Really? On Sesame Street, 1969. Therefore, it is Cookie Monster Day. Wait, wait, you said 1966. Well, he was... He appeared in a commercial in 1966. I see. He made his debut okay. in on Sesame Street, 1969. So right. Cookie Monster was on a commercial first, and then on on this date in 1966. That's what they said, right? <laughs> As they say, and um, the original and then, version. Yeah, and then three years should, later, we should get a, I, an original like, 1966. Yeah, so I, I don't know if he was blue back then. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, today is also Look for Circles Day. Are those crop circles? Or are they just circles like you design in Spirograph or, or uh, what's that that red thing? You know, with the dials. What's that uh, thing called again? You know. Oh, the uh, etch a sketch. sketch. Yeah. yeah. Look for circles. Dave. I saw you doing this, and I was like, hey. <laughs> you know the I circles know, thing. I didn't know what was going on. Ooh. <laughs> First, you're looking at underwear. <laughs> then I, I'm tuning in the TV. Know, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm on the UHF channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's National Devil Eggs Day. Right. And uh, Cookie Monster Day, as we said. Uh, let's see. 1922. Qantas, the Australian airline, launched their first flight. Never flown Qantas. Hmm. Have you? You'd have to be well, Australian. Wasn't that the airline in um, Rain Man that he was like, got to fly Qantas because it had the greatest safety record? I think you're right. Like, you gotta fly Boy, Qantas. Gotta fly Qantas. Gotta fly Qantas. Who's it? You know. You know, most people. Yeah. Since we were talking about underwear, Rain Man had to go to Kmart to get new underwear. He did. <laughs> you're right. 
See how this all tied together? <laughs> what a really rehearsal did. we had. Qantas to underwear. <laughs> and Rain Man. Uh, 1959, in the scandal that eventually made its way through TV game shows industries. 21 contestant Charles Van Doren confessed that his winning streak was fixed. What? Can you imagine that? I still don't believe that's true. It is. It was 1959. Yeah. And then they did a movie on it. Remember the movie wasn't at 21? Yeah. Are you he jumbling went? up these dates? Because we had 1966 already. Well, that was just because it's Cookie Monster. Oh, I'm sorry. So okay, it's, I it's tying into you, you when it all happened. We'll peek in there. I yeah. don't know. Okay. It was what's called a pin, John. We put a pin <laughs> in it. You put a pin in it. It's what's it's trending. Pin. No, it's what's trending. <laughs> yes. Cookie Monster is oh, trending. Yeah, absolutely. By the so, way, I found that commercial. For, what was it for? Cookies? Uh, yeah, for cookies. Shall we? Yeah, let's check it yeah. out. Okay. Get to the commercial. All right. But do we have to see a commercial before the commercial? Uh, It all started when I discovered wheels. You know, these wheel-shaped, cheese-flavored snacks that taste so... Mmm. Cheese-flavored. Anyhow, I was fixing a tray of wheels when suddenly... I saw a wheel stealer. I am a wheel stealer. <laughs> and he ate up all my wheels. So then I fixed a tray of flutes. These flute-shaped snacks with a butternut flavor. But when I turned my back, a flute snatcher got them. The flute snatcher strikes again! So then I bought crowns, crown-shaped snacks with the scrumptious corn-roasted flavor, and I was enjoying their corny crunchiness when I realized the character on the TV screen was, in reality, a crown grabber. Crowns! So that's it, friends. When you eat wheels, flutes, and crowns, you're going to meet wheel stealers, flute snatchers, and crown grabbers. But beware, they're very sneaky and have all kinds of disguises. Okay. Well... So Apparently that was not a real successful campaign because no. those brands are not around no. anymore. No, wheels, flutes, and crowns. Uh, not big sellers. Crackers that are just shaped like wheels. Curses that Oreos. Flutes and crowns. Huh? And I, I'd like to know what uh, snack executive is like, hey, let's shape it like a flute. <laughs> <laughs> wheels I get, crowns I get, flutes, not quite sure no. where, where you're going with that. But yes, so Cookie Monster originally eating wheels, I guess. Yeah, he had the he wheels. Was wheel Monster. He had sharp teeth, too. I had to file yeah, those down for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little creepy. Yeah, anyway. All right. 1985, the TV soundtrack for Miami Vice went to number one on the U.S. album chart. Spent a total of 11 weeks at number one. Remember the theme from Miami Vice? Jan Wenner, uh, wasn't it? No. Uh, Jan Hammer. Yeah, Hammer. Jan, Jan Wenner was from Rolling Stone. Yeah, yeah, Jan Hammer. Hammer. Jan Hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The theme from Miami Vice. Right. Just an instrumental. Sure, when you needed to hit the top of the hour news, <laughs> you throw that instrument. You can fade it wherever. I need to give it a, yeah. a fade. Nobody will notice. Yeah. Crack it and tell I mean, there was a time in radio in which the merino fade was, oh, it was, that was an industry I got standard. really good at that. The old merino fade. <laughs> We're going to give it the fade. Yeah. The motto is everything fades, yeah. just like radio. <laughs> okay. 1990, a Cornell University graduate student unleashed the first computer virus in the country's online system. Clogging thousands of computers around the nation. 1990. Mm, good for you. There probably weren't a whole lot of... No. And the internet really wasn't around. It was, but yet, it wasn't but quite the mass public thing, yeah. Yeah, so. it didn't get... Inter it got interrupted no, like you, mine did today. <laughs> you couldn't go just browse underwear at that point. Heck no. Okay. <laughs> now we got living, fella. <laughs> 1994, astronomers in Holland discovered a new galaxy. 10 million light years away from Earth. They named it Dwingleloo 1. Dwingleloo 1? One? Dwingleloo 1. Yeah, Dwingleloo. Dwingle. Can you imagine? Dwingleloo 1, yeah. Okay. Can you imagine Kirk saying, Spock? <laughs> yeah. We're going to Dwingleloo 1. Sulu's that course for Dwingleloo. <laughs> 10 you heard me. million yeah. light years away. How did they determine how long a light year is? It's the distance that light travels in, in, in years yeah wow. so the distance that's, that light travels over the course of a year that's a light year how fast is so that? light year is a is a measure of distance. i know buzz light year he probably gets there pretty quick <laughs> and finally it's on this day in 2016 to infinity and beyond the chicago cubs won the world series for the first time in 108 years eerily predicted 
in Back to the Future 3, I no, think. No, it was 2. I was think. it 2? Okay. I think it was 2. Yeah. 3 was the Western one. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I like that. Actually. Although ZZ anyway, Top was in the Western right. one. Uh, but yeah, right, right. And Back to the Future 2. Right. They beat the Cleveland Indians 8-7 to seven in Game 7. And back then they were the Cleveland Indians. Now the, Not the Guardians? Yeah, the yeah, Guardians. Cleveland Guardians. And, and that's your two-cent history lesson. I think you learned something today. Oh, God, yeah, you did. Did we not? We learned yeah. about cookies and flutes. Right. And, and wheels. That there's three snacks that don't exist anymore. It's Cookie Monster Day. And now you know why. Yes. All right. Two Cent History Lesson brought to you by Drew Goble of Oakland Insurance and Michigan-based Frank and Muth Insurance. Your insurance should not uh, make more work for you. As a business owner, you rely on relationships, and Drew Goble of Oakland Insurance believes the best relations, uh, relationships are honest, upfront, and fair. So if you're looking for a proactive partner, not a part-time assistant, or a part-time lover, have a frank conversation about your business insurance needs. Call Drew Goble at Oakland Insurance today, 248-647-2500. If you've got an old beer can collection from the 70s, oh, yeah, and you want to know how much it's worth, and should I insure this? It's not, and you call shouldn't. Drew Goble and say, "Drew, <laughs> I've got an Iron City beer, oh, what? Pittsburgh Steelers oh Super Bowl edition beer can. I'll be right over. Can I can I insure this? He'll say, "Sure, it's worth a dime. Yeah, right, <laughs> a dime a year. Yeah. He'll be, well, let me know how much you value it. Where is it? In a cardboard box under the stairs, up in my attic. Yeah, well, sure, it might be a little rusty by now from all the <laughs> and everything that's gotten into the attic. But I think it's worth something. Sure, have it checked out. Okay, have it valued. Well, that's good to know. And then call Drew. That's our two cent history lesson too. All right, uh, coming up tomorrow we have some sad news. We'll know more tomorrow than we usually do on that's Thursdays right, because we won't have the less you know with Rich Grover. We should have a sit-in for Rich. I don't know. He's out west. Oh, he's filming. Yeah. Back to the Future 4. <laughs> Maybe he is. I don't know. This Rich yeah. playing Rich the Kid? Well, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, reenacting? As he pointed out, the gunfight you know, if, we, if he was going to be here tomorrow, we would likely be doing like an election preview because the next election is next Tuesday. When he comes back two days after the election, we'll probably talk about what the And he said, you know what? What? We will be a lot smarter two days after the election in making to. predictions than prior to. <laughs> we will be geniuses two days after the election. Yeah. Like, oh, so, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what that's I knew. That's just what we predicted. I totally knew that's how that was going to turn you out. Know, what we should do then is we should just for fun, we'll go through the ballot and pick who we think's going to win. <laughs> we'll call DraftKings. Oh, yeah. And we'll place our bets. Okay. All right. We'll let it run. Maybe we will do that. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll take oh, all God. the money that's in the Indeed Cup mm -hmm. and, and invest it in our gambling. Yeah, all the money that's in buy. there. Did, did, <laughs> Somebody stole what? from the NT. We've yes. had a thief down here. <laughs> Call We're the police. We're going to have to investigate Call this. the police. We've had a thief down here. <laughs> hmm. I took my money back. <laughs> <laughs> you are so cheap. Uh, we could have used that money, money to buy a lottery ticket and won a billion uh, well, okay. dollars. Okay, you know what? That's where that money should have right. gone. I've still, I still don't want it. I, uh, I will do that. We will buy a podcast lottery ticket. You got to do it today because the drawing's yeah. coming up. Right. All right. Unlike yeah. election predictions, you can't buy the ticket after the drawing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are the numbers I want. Yeah. These seem to be the good numbers. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> or we could go into the future and find out what the numbers are going to be. Right. Come back and pick those numbers. And the best way to go into the future is in a DeLorean. Yeah. And if you have a DeLorean, you know, they have a lot of mechanical breakdowns. Yeah, sometimes they have yeah. trouble. The people to call are Murphy's Family Auto. Oh, of course they are. And how? They're all your auto repair and vehicle maintenance needs. They've been specializing in car and trucks, including engines and transmission work, electrical service, heating and cooling issues, and brakes. We call it the whole shebang. Call Murphy's Family Auto, 517-552-3040. They're now open on Saturdays, 8 to 1. And if you tell them Mike and John sent you, yeah. well, as you bring your DeLorean in, they'll give you... 5% off your bill. How about that? Murphy's Family Auto. Your car knows. Murphy'sFamilyAuto.com. And be sure to check out Glenn's Mike and John trucker hat. Right. Oh, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Give him a compliment. Ask to see that. it. Ask to see it. We should have autographed that for him now that I think about it. <laughs> really Could have it. added value. Yeah. No, no. We got a Sharpie. Ruin that. All right. So... Also, I want to thank Richter and Associates Property Management, licensed real estate brokers, rental property experts in Livingston, Genesee, and Oakland counties, 40 plus years in the business, located in downtown Howell. Find them online, richterassoc.com, R I C H T E R A S S O C.com, or call them at 517 540 9560.
You know, it's going to be a beautiful day on this November 2nd as you're driving down M59, oh. especially uh, heading west. Is there something there? In the hollow. You might see yeah. a billboard. I, oh. I heard. Somebody said, hey, there's a billboard with you guys on oh, it. Oh, wow. Okay. On M59 near Argentine. Right. Right yeah. by the meat place. <laughs> we're, we're hanging out by the meat. <laughs> what a shock. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like bacon. Yes. There's Mike and John. <laughs> Giggling with Mike and John. Tune in next time and giggle on. All right. Here we are, post show. Yeah, we are post show now. Good point. No, I thought, you know, it's, um, oh, you thought that it or just noting that, and that was it, huh? <laughs> it's well, you know, it is. It is Cookie Monster Day, and I, I when I think of Cookie Monster, of course, I think of cookies. So uh, I was Did reminiscent you, to when we first started the show. Did you bring? And, it? No, oh. um, still have Halloween candy to get rid of. Oh God, so do we. And everybody seems to be a big fan of the Hershey's um, cookies and cream. Yeah, I don't like those. You don't like those? No. Oh, I've, I've, that's I'm surprised you do. Had. You normally don't like I, I, things I, mixed into your chocolate. I, no, I don't. Yeah. But the cookies and cream one. Okay, that's your exception. Uh, yeah, right. it's, it's good. But I only had one. Okay. And I only had one Kit Kat. Yeah. And that's all I've had of Halloween candy. You know, I've got to so, tell you. Oh, wait a minute. I had a little mini Hershey fun. Okay. Too. Well, that's it. That, that's that, all that, I've that's had. That's good. So just three since Halloween. Here's what I had, truthfully. I had one of those things of Whoppers, the three little Whoppers in the sleeve. That's all I had. You only out of all the candy. I have you all of it. No, I was like, no. I made a vow to my wife. I go, I'm not having any candy here on Halloween because Halloween's I kind of blow it. Yeah. At a certain point, you're like, well, it's just, you know. Yeah, they, um, but Whoppers. Yeah. And I did. All I, I, I guess I broke my vow technically. Well, you I, did. I you did. But I just had the one little sleeve of Whoppers, and then I was kind of like. <laughs> I should have had the Snickers. <laughs> I know it's good. That's why I say. But I, I, I stopped. I stopped. I, yeah, yeah. I used to like getting the milk duds when I was a kid, just because not everybody liked the milk duds. And I then mean, there would be those yeah. boxes you get. You know, the boxes are all the same size. Those little little boxes of milk duds. Mm-hmm. And some you'd get three, and sometimes you get four. You get that fourth when one. You get that that four, got stuck. It was kind of like a bonus, <laughs> right? <You're> like, <laughs> yeah. You know, and the other thing is, and I we we probably should have done this review yesterday, the day after Halloween, but were you giving out candy on Halloween? We did give out candy. Yeah, yeah. Were you the candy giver? No, I wasn't. Oh, okay. My wife handled the candy. I see. All right. What I was noticing, and I see this every year, but I know more this year than in years past, where the kids would and they would they would like watch intently what candy you were getting out of the bowl and putting in their bag. Were they like would and they then dodge it. They would. Got, no. Oh, he's got the. You got the whoppers. I'm going over you here. You can tell by the look whether you the whether you hit the mark or not. Yeah. Some you'd be like, oh, and they'd be like, mm, okay. All right. So no. as a as a hander outer, did you give like the more polite or little cute yes. kids more? Yes. And then the teenager came up, and you're like, <laughs> no, I, really? I took care of the teens. I like the teens. I like <laughs> to see the teens out you, there. You took care of the teens. Yeah. yeah, they should. I mean, what else are they going to be doing? You're playing, you know what. Nintendo. Exactly. Nintendo oh, yeah, go get some candy. Here's some candy. <laughs> candy. I don't care. Xbox. Uh, I gotta get hip. Only one it. kid, though, who was very specific, and he asked nicely, I have to admit, he goes, hey, I really don't like Milk Duds. And it was Milk Duds, by the way. He goes, I really don't like Milk Duds. Hit the road. <laughs> He's like, could, could I have the Sour Apple uh, uh, Johnny, uh, Jolly, uh, Rancher. Jolly Rancher? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. Here you go. Good luck getting the wrapper off that thing, because sometimes the wrapper would stick on that, and then you got to suck it, and all of a sudden, the wrapper's floating around yeah. in your mouth. He did Should have went for the milk done. Did ask very nicely. Oh, that's, so, all right. Okay. So you got his Jolly Rancher. Right. Sour apple? Uh, it was, yes. Yeah, those are the best ones. And then They're I wanted one of those, but I held off. <sighs> and we have a whole bag of them upstairs, and now I want some. This is a stupid post-show. Yeah, post-show. Yeah. Unlike all the other post-shows, yeah, which they were quality stuff. Awesome. 